So today I just go for a small recap of how to install Java. Okay, how to uh, download and install Java and then Eclipse and then I'll go for variables and data types. So to first install Java, to you need to confirm whether you have Java in your machine. So just go to your start and type cmd command prompt. So here you will get your uh, command prompt. Just type here Java space hyphen version. If you get a version, your Java is installed. Otherwise, if you get Java is not a recognized command, so you need to install Java and JDK. So directly you can install JDK itself. So just browse JDK download. Then go to the first one. Then here you can see JDK. Click on this. Then if you come down, you can see Java AC development kit ATU144. Click accept license agreement and then choose whether this is your Windows 32 bit means Windows X86 you have to download. 64 bit means X64 you need to download. X86, uh, how to say, it's a 32 bit over here. Okay, so how to confirm your 32 64 bit machine means go to start, my computer, right click, properties. Here you can see your system type, 64 bit or 32 bit, minus 64 bit. So I can just click on this and then download this. So once you download this exe file, double click on that and then click on next, next and then install. That's it. Okay. No need to do anything. Just click on next, next, next and then install. So your Java and JDK is installed right now. So to confirm, if you go to your C drive, you can see your program files will be there. Okay. So here Java folder will create. In that you can see JRE plus JDK, two folders. This is your Java, this is your JDK. Both has been installed. Now go to inside your JDK folder, bin folder, copy that, copy this, go to your my computer, right click properties advanced system settings advanced tab environment variables here you can search for the path okay if you come down a little bit you can see the path variable here right click sorry uh, you can click on edit then go to the end of the line okay go to the end of the line then give a semicolon like this okay if you don't have give a semicolon then after that paste the path okay then click on okay i already have the path mentioned so i'm clicking on cancel you have to paste the path click on okay and okay and then okay that's it okay so you have installed the java and jdk then you have to give the path okay of the jdk bin folder okay where under the my computer right click properties advanced system settings environment variables under the system variables if you come down path will be there edit give a semicolon at the end of the statement then paste it that's it clear anyone has any questions on this no Okay, cool. Super. So we have installed JDK. Now next we will install, uh, sorry, uh, download Eclipse. So for that, just give here Eclipse Kepler download. That means just give a version name. Kepler is one of the version. Okay. So I'm just giving a name of the Kepler Mars or something you can give a version name. Browse, go to the first URL. Here you can see all the packages. So I just went with the Kepler name. Okay, so now, right now we are in Kepler. So you can just download anything. Only these five you can download anything. Okay, don't go the below things. 
you don't download the below information. Those are all very old. So Kepler or the above one. Here Eclipse IDE for oh, Java. Oh. Yeah, yes, Satya. Hello. Is the oxygen is the advanced one, upgraded uh, one, or uh, oxygen is the latest package. package? Okay, Kepler okay. or a little bit old, but I like the UI, so that's why I'm going with Kepler. For us, Kepler itself will work mm -hmm. because okay. we are, these are all some advanced things which are all necessary for the J2E. Okay, we are going to work on with okay. Clear Code Java only, so Kepler itself mm -hmm. will work for us. So right now, actually, what uh, Kepler UI I like it, so that's why I'm going for that. That's the only reason. Mm, okay. Okay. So here, under Eclipse ID for Java WE developers, you can see Windows 32 bit or 64 bit. So minus 64 bit. Click on this. Your download will start. You will get a zip file like this. Eclipse. Now right click on the zip file, extract here. You will get an Eclipse folder. Go inside that, click on this Eclipse. That's it, okay. So directly you can download and use it, Eclipse alone. No need to install. Directly you can download and install. Then here, you'll get the workspace launcher. So here, you have to, so right now actually what it will be showing in the C drive, you try to browse and then go to a new location always, okay? So I'll go to Murli laptop, okay? Then here I'll just actually what, create a new folder. Learning Java backup, I just need, simply. Okay, I have created a new folder here. Okay, click on enter. So if I go to this place, learning java backup okay a folder i have created now i'm going to select it okay then when i click on okay you can see some temporary files will be loaded here can you see this is my workspace where i can create my projects and then i can work on with java that's all everything So we have created it. Now, I don't want this, so I'll close this. So how Java works means, so first we should have a workspace. Then we should have a project. Then we should have a package. Then we should have a Java R class files. This is what we need. Okay, so we have created the workspace. Next is we have to create a project. So for that, go to file, new, project. Then here select Java project. Otherwise go to the Java folder and select Java project. Click on next. Okay, then here select the environment. So here the environment should be 1.7 or 1.8 okay so right now my 1.8 is here use default GRE we select it is 1.8 so I'll go with 1.7 as of now no worries then I'll give the project name the learning new Java then after that I click on finish So it's going to say that I'm going to change the view. Are you okay with that? See, <clears throat> right now Java W is there. Right now a new section called Java will come for me. See? So this is the place I need to work on it. That's why I gave Java SE 1.7. Then we will get this section. Then it close this. These unwanted windows I don't want. I'll make this myself. So I closed everything. Then after that, you can see 
you can see that project is created okay under the project you can see one source folder and then one bin folder will be there and then other settings files and project files will be there okay so source folder and then bin folder what is it is necessary means okay so right now we have created till workspace and project okay so next we have to create a project package and then a java or class files i have mentioned so first we'll create the package then i'll tell you about the usage of source and bin folder i'll open here here it will show source and then jre system library these both alone okay so jre system library is the place where you can have all your jar files okay then after the source folder we will create a package so what are these jar files means which are all useful for to work on with our uh, java related that is if i want to execute the java code i need these jar files over there that's the thing then right click on the source folder new package i'll give first package I'll give. it's giving me discourage package name so what does that means so always java okay so should start with a small letter okay so see discourage package name usually it should start with a lower case letter that's the thing so give the package name starting with a small letter first package click on finish okay we have created a package then after that i need to create a java or class files we'll see what is that so right click on the package new class then here you give basics of java i'll give okay so if you start the class name with a small letter it will give you discourage package name package name should start with small letter class name should start with uppercase letter okay that's a standard procedure it's just a warning it's not mandatory then here we have public and default right now i'll select default you can select public also what is the difference also show you only thing is if you have public select public a keyword called extra public will come that's it then after that select the main function okay public then select public static main main function click on finish see we have created the only thing is what means here if you give pub select public there you will get the public keyword if you select default you will not get this public keyword that's the only difference okay so you see uh not enter the public it will throw an error or nothing no error it just information you want to make this classes public or not if you select default you will not get this public keyword there this is for accessing okay that's the only thing okay you can have like this then see package is first package then classes basics of java then that is what my class name then i'll have my main function what does this main function means it's an executable function where you can execute your program okay whatever information that you have written inside this main function will be executed by default that's all okay. now i'll increase the font size go to window preferences type font colors and fonts basic folder if you come down text font edit then i'll give it as 12 as of now okay and okay okay i will increase the font size so now i created the basics of java okay i have created so if i want to print something syso control space okay yes why yes so and then press control space and then in double quotes if you give some information that will be printed so i'll just give hello world right click run as java application see 
hello world will be printed whatever information so if i give so rather there is another shortcut for output uh that means you asking yeah for the control output we are going for the right click and ah yeah yeah we have output. different things so here also you can run it this is the place Okay. okay this also you can do so if you press drop down run as java application okay this also can do and then okay. alt shift x j okay so that also will do alt okay. shift x j oh, sorry okay yeah another one f5 also will work Hello world. Okay, so we have executed it. Next, uh, I'll just mute it. So next, we have. executed the program we just want to see what is there under the source folder and then bin folder so i created a class can you see under the source folder we can see dot java extension basics of the java dot java extension same thing if you go to the bin folder if you go to the original folder view see this my project i have a source and then i have a bin folder if i go to the source folder i have my package name which is first package then here i can see the basics of java which is a java file so when i right click edit it what are the informations which i have written there the same thing will come see hello world right now i'll just make it as hi now i'll just close this see hi whatever i type over there the same informations will come here okay yeah so uh, like only one file will be um, uh, would be last updated program right or for every console execution it will send like each separate file uh no yeah you yeah, i think you misunderstood it wrongly so the information is okay if you have in this package four to five files Five Java files. Here also you will get five Java files here. See, I'll create one more. Okay. Okay. Uh, Selenium session. I'll just create simply. Then click on the main function. Click on finish. Can you see one more Java file is created? Same thing here. You can see one more Java file will be created. Okay. 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 okay? so whatever i have there same thing will be present so what is this place the source folder here means it will consist of the all the java files which are editable okay, okay. same thing if i go to the bin folder uh, i'll mute you satya okay here in this first package you can see okay i'm there in the bin folder in the first package here i can see all our dot class files there all our java files here it is dot class files these dot class files um, these dot class files are not editable you cannot open it windows cannot open the file okay it is used only for execution so source folder there we have the java files na? that is the place where you can write your programs then the class file okay so when you save the java file that time okay there is a concept called jvm java virtual machine, java virtual machine. Okay. okay so that one will help you to create the class files for every java file there will be a dot class file okay dot class files are used only for execution alone so why we why we they made like that means because 
if any clients need for it to execute okay so that time we can use this dot class file to give to them and then they can execute so the code is safe and then after that for us the uh, okay uh, execution also can be done by the client over there so there will not be any problem from both the sides so if you saved your code and then client also is able to execute the application which is developed by yourself okay that's why they have done so that actually what it's secure your codes are secured here this is what okay this is about the source folder and then the bin folder your java files and the class files any questions so far for anyone no yeah sure okay so now we'll see about data types and then variables so still now as i we have talked we have uh, spoken about actually what the installation part so for java here i given everything out install the jdk everything is with screenshots i will forward you this document you can just go through this document and then you can get it okay. then eclipse installation so we have the eclipse kepler download to give then you will find this icon eclipse id for java wws here you click on that windows 32 bit or 64 bit then you you'll get this workspace launcher when you click on the eclipse icon there in the folder once you extract that you'll get that eclipse folder there you click on the eclipse application workspace launcher will come then you can browse and select a different place then close the welcome screen file then create a new project go to file new project here then java project here to select then create the project name then you have to create a package there package then you have to create a a class file then what are the things you need to give over there then after that how to execute the program if you right click run as java application your program will start to execute that's it. this is what we have seen still now clear now we are going to see about data types so what are those data types here so we have different data types in the industry okay so the byte is the first data type which came then after that we have short integer log then also we have float double then we have character string boolean these are the data so string alone is not a data type in java okay it's a class okay they can perform more but it also acts as a data type string alone is a class that acts as a data type here okay that's the only thing here other things all are data types string alone is a class which acts as a data type here so how it works means so byte will help you to store values from minus 120 to 1000 so this byte short integer long all these things are helpful for you to store numbers float and double are helpful for you to store decimal values this is helpful for you to store numbers this is helpful for you to store decimals character used to store a single letter alone so it's like for example a anything that should come in single quote a x 
or one like that any one information alone can be stored here Whether, whether the one will become under character? Yes, anything that should come in a single code will be treated as a character. Okay. Same thing, anything that comes under a double quotes, okay, that will be treated as a string. It can be a single letter or it can be a group of words. Okay, anything that comes under double quotes will be treated as a string here that's the thing boolean will help you to store true or false alone true or false alone that's all it is clear then so this byte short integer long all those things okay so how it works all those things we'll see okay so right now this all these data types are what means okay all these data types are means are kind of a container okay these are all a container which helps you to store that is actually gives an information actually what what is the maximum or minimum value you can store in it okay that's what so it's like this just for byte so it is like this okay so this is for byte short integer long then float This is what we have. Okay, so byte will help you to store values. Okay, the uh, numbers which I'm going to give it's not real numbers. I'll tell you the real numbers right now. I'm trying to help explain the concept in an easier way. That's what byte will help you to store values from minus 128 to 127. That's what byte will help us to do. Then short will help you to store values from minus 300 to 300. Integer will help you to store values from minus 500 to 500. Then long will help you to store values from minus thousand to thousand five then float it will help you to store values from minus two thousand five hundred point double zero two three thousand point double zero like that Double will help you to store values from minus five thousand point double zero to five thousand point double nine. That's it. Clear? This is what I'm saying. It's a container. That is, these data types will tell to the variables. This is the maximum value you can store in it. So, for example, I want to store a value called 250, which is a number. Two fifty is what I need to store. So now, what are the informations will be 
helpful for me to store. So minus 120 to 127. In this, can I store actually what? 250? No, it is not there under this range. Okay, in this range, 250 cannot be stored. Minus 300 to 300 can be stored? Yes. So short will help me to store it short. Then minus 500 to 500? Yes, integer will be stored. Then minus 1000 to 1500, long also will support. So these three things will help for me to support because it's a number. Same thing if actually it is minus 4000.30 it is 4000.30 so same thing so it's a decimal so only float and double will accept so minus 2500.00 to 3000.00 in this actually what can we store 4000.30 no it's not there under this range in the double minus 5000.00 to 5000.99 here in this range 4000.30 will come minus so so here in double i can store it that's the thing this is how it works Clear for everyone? This is how it works here. Okay, this is what? Okay, <laughs> data types are useful. It's a range of values, as like a container, which helps us to say the range of values that can be stored. Yeah, any doubts, Satya? No. Clear, cool. Okay, so the original numbers are like this. So these are the original numbers. See, byte minus 128 to 127. Okay, it can store short minus 32,768 to 32,767. Integer will help you to store my a big range of values here. Okay, can you see? A big range of values in millions, it will help me to store it. Long, you can see this range. It has a very big range. Okay, then same thing. Float, it also a big range then double also it's a big range plus or minus to this value okay it goes in trillions and something that these are all the original ranges here so i uh, used a basic values for you to explain the concept in an easier manner that's what i did the original range are this one i'll paste it here for you guys This is what they arrange. Yeah. So next. Next we'll see about variables. 
so what is a variable okay so what is this data type means actually what is a like a container which helps you to say what type of range of values can be stored in a variable that's what it will do okay a container which which helps to to see what type of which helps us to define the range of values to be stored in a variable this is the thing okay this is what this will do so next is variable So variables so how a variable okay can be used okay in variable there are two things one is declaration and initialization these are the two things so what is this declaration another one is initialization declaration initialization okay so how it will be used okay declaration is what means okay creating a variable okay that is called declaration initialization means assigning a value to the variable that is called as initialization so declaration how it will be used means integer i okay i need to give it like this integer i so okay integer i when i queue what happened means it creates a memory location and then gives a name to the memory location for it like this so create me a memory location and then the name of the memory location will be i then the integer here this one will helps us to say to the memory location store only integer values that means store only values in between minus 500 to 500 that's what it's going to do okay that means that's why i told you data types are used to define the range of values that to be stored in a variable that's the thing okay this is what it will do now initialization initialization how it can be done means i is equal to 10 when i give what will happen right now it will search for the memory location called i yes this is my memory location i then 10 so 10 is the value which will be passed here okay but before storing the 10 this integer will verify whether this 10 is in between the range of it okay see this is the integer right it's there in between the range minus 500 to 500 in between this range we have this that's it clear that is what this will do this is how we declare and then initialize declaration initialization can be done in a single step also so integer a is equal to 20 when i give what will happen integer a will help me to create a memory location and then a will be the memory location name a will be the memory location name this integer this will act as a reference tell to the memory location store only integer values alone then this 20 will be stored in it 
verify whether this 20 is in between the range of the integer values. It's minus 500 to 500 in between range, right? 20 comes. Yes, it can be done. Okay, this is what declaration initialization. Okay, so how it can be used? So we'll see. Sorry, I'll create a class here. Usage of variables. So here I give public static one. And in case if I forgot to give the main function, how to get that? Click on finish. If we don't have a main main function, this is a shortcut. M A I N control space. When I give, then click on enter. That will give me my main function. Okay, so simple. Type M A I N control space enter. That will give me a main function. So if you don't want to execute a line in the Java program, you have to give two double forward slash. If you type M A I N, then if you press control plus space plus enter button that will get you my main function then shortcut to print it yes why yes so okay so yes why yes so then if you press control plus space button that will get you my system dot outdoor print and control plus space button then if you give hello world that will print you okay now I want to declare an initialization variable how to do integer i is equal to 10 I give. so if I want to print the value of the variable means how I need to do so zone then I need to give in i we'll see what will happen first right click run as so I given the variable name in double quotes. What's happening? It's printing high itself. That means anything that has been written inside double quotes will be treated as a string one day. Okay. So we need to give suzo i like this. Then right click run as Java application. Can you see? Now it has printed 10. Okay. Anything that should, if you want to print the variable information, you should give it without double quotes the variable name okay you have to give the variable name like this i is a variable name so that will print you the variable value that is 10 here okay anyone has any questions guys so far anyone has any questions no actually in the main task uh you see there is there is a string uh, then just open and close the ah, then yes. ask which is the default uh, there is the default one right? correct this is a default syntax for main function so by this only it will understand it's yes. an executable function so we don't need to execute it by default actually java itself knows that actually what to execute the program okay okay so mm. in so this I step yeah, yes, yes, tell me. Yes, sir, I just want to know, like, uh, why do only uh, mention here, like, string uh, arguments? Ah, that's like, a syntax over here this. for this. Uh, our own methods, okay. we can do whatever we need, but this is actually what main function. Uh, we have to follow their process. Our own methods, we can do whatever. Okay, so by default it accepts the uh, the array type, right? That's ah, yes, array type of string. Array type of string. Okay. okay. Yeah, that's the thing. Okay. Okay, and second thing, like, uh, on what situation we should use the those, uh, uh, like, byte? Because I never uh, saw like anywhere use byte or uh, small scale, uh, you know, numbers. Uh, so usually. So in my in my uh, place actually what always I use integer only 
yeah yeah integer okay. only most uh, in but in the developers world they will use different data types okay so when you go to finance domain or when you go to actually what banking domain there the numbers will be huge so that time they use log oh, okay. okay same thing actually what uh, standard practice everyone use for decimal is double this uh, double uh, usually will go with the very long numbers so that's when they go with that so standard to use integer and then double clear right okay yeah Great. So this step is declaration and initialization. Okay. So if I want to declare only, so how I can use integer e, what will happen? This will help me to create the variable. And this is called as declaration. Then a is equal to 10. This is called as initialization. So if I print the value of a now, I'll make it as 20. And as Java application, see, 20 will be printed. Same thing now, if I give a is equal to 40, then if I print, this is a. Now what will happen? The a value will be actually what? Latest will be 40. This step is called as reinitialization. This step is called as reinitialization. That's it. Clear? This is declaration. This is initialization. This is reinitialization. Understood, right? For everyone. Yeah. Okay. So now we will see about global and local variables. Uh, you guys need any break? It's better we can have a break, a five minutes break. Don't want to continue continuously. It'll be not good. So we'll have a five minutes break. Then we will okay. see a book as what is global and local variables. Still now what we have seen means installation of Java and GDK and then how to download and use Eclipse to create a workspace, project, package, and then a Java or class file. And difference between what is Java file, what is class file. And then how to execute a program, what is a variable and data type. That's what we have seen still now. Now we'll see the difference between a global and local variable. Okay. So we'll have a five minutes break. Eight o'clock we'll again connect. Okay. okay. Yeah. Thank you.
Hey guys, we'll start the session. So we have seen about variables and data types. Now we are going to see what is a global variable and what is a local variable. Okay. Any variable that has been declared inside the function is called as a local variable. Okay, any variable that has been declared inside the function is called as a local variable. So, declaration means what? Integer a. Okay, this is called declaration or integer a. This is declaration plus initialization. Okay, declaration should happen inside the main function. That is called as local variable. Any variable that has been declared outside the function, okay, that is called as global variable. So integer x equal to 10 or I'll give 50. Integer y is equal to 100. This is called as global variable. Okay, any variable that has been declared outside the function, okay, that is called as a global variable. Global variable is of two types. One is static, another one is non-static. Okay, this is a static variable. This is a non-static variable. Okay, a variable which does not have a keyword called static is called as a non-static variable here. That's it. Clear? So how all these variables can be used? That's what we're going to see now. So local variables can be directly used with the help of the variable name. System.printer and A. That's it. If I right click run as Java application, then, okay, this will help me to get me the variable printer. Same thing, global variables. If you see, okay, so static variables, the best practice to use is Sizo. What is the class name? Global local variables. So we have to use global local variables dot x. Okay, that is global local variable dot x. So static variables should be referred with help of class name. This is how we are See, right click, run as Java application. 50 is printing. The x value is 50. So for the non-static variables, we need to refer it with the help of the object name. So if I want to use non-static variables, Always I need to create an object. So how to create an object means? So this is my class name. For this class, I want to create an object mean. I need to give new global local variables class name. Okay. I need to use it. Okay. This will help me to create an object. Okay. The object is created. Now I need to give a name for the object. And then the reference. So objects always deals with classes. So the class name will be the reference. So I need to give the class name obj1 equal to okay. Obj1 is the object name. Global local variables is the class name reference. So these values and all okay. Variables all deal with data types. So that's why I'm giving this data type information. Objects deals with classes. So I'm giving the class name information here. Okay, so what will happen right now means in this object all the global members will be loaded. Okay, it might be static or non-static. All the global members will be loaded. It might be a variable or it might be a function. Okay, all the static and non-static members will be loaded into the object. Through reference of that object, I can access it. So, obj1 dot 
way. Can you see? I can access. Okay. So this is how I can access the non-static members. Okay. Local variables directly we can use the variable name. Static variables you have to use the reference of a class name. Non-static members you have to use the reference of the object name. Static members alone you can access in different ways. CISO obj1 dot then x can you see it's there x is here okay so and then my main function also will be there so through help of the static members i can access the global members static and non-static members everything main also is a static member that's why that is also coming here okay so i use the x obj x then CISO. then next actually what if I directly give the variable name x that is also is possible okay static members alone can be used with reference of a class name reference of class name then reference of object name directly with help of variable name this is how you can access clear so local variables you can use directly with the help of variable name alone okay same thing non-static members can be used only with reference of object name alone that's all clear any questions so far for anyone any questions for anyone uh you're asking about what this one this yes. step oh. is it yeah yeah that's all this is how we can create an object okay this keyword new global local variables what is this global local variables it's my class name okay yes. so with this keyword it helps me to create an object so what will happen means it will load all the global members it might be a variable or it might be a function all will be loaded then i need to give a name for that object so that is obj1 then i need to give a reference objects always deals with classes so global local variables is my class name so that will be the reference there so that all the global local members of this global local variables class will be loaded into the object understood yeah okay so that is the uh, like uh, syntax or format for creating an object right correct this is the syntax to create an object okay clear so what will happen means when i execute this program Okay. So when I execute this program, how it will be executed? That's what we're going to see right now. So I will delete this unwanted information.
so that it does not confuse us when I'm executing the program. That's why I'm removing it. So when I execute this program, how the execution will happen? Now? So when I execute the program, always first it creates me one memory location. Okay, so it creates me one memory location, and then the name of the memory location will be my class name with some hexadecimal number. Okay, so it will be like this, and then following with x a one two three four e f g h like that it will be there. Okay, so that's what it will be there. So this is my name of the memory location. Then the first memory which will be created into the memory is static pool. Static pool is the first memory which will be created. Static pool is the first memory which will be created for me. Then here all the static members will be created for me here. Okay, all the static members will be created here. So what are the static members we have? Static int x is equal to 50. That is one. Then after that, my main function, public static void main. So I just write it as a here. Yeah. Main main. So these two are, are the first which will be loaded into the memory. All the static members are loaded. Then I told you main is an executable function. Now my main function will start to execute. So now when it starts to execute, what will happen? It will create me a local memory for main. Local memory for main will be created. That's what it will do. Clear? It's created. Now it's created. Then after that, the main function start to execute. Integer a is equal to 10. What will happen now for me? Uh, this is what declaration initialization. Now a new variable is created into the main function. Okay, that's why it's a local variable I have told. Okay, if you if you're declaring a variable inside the main function, it's a local variable. So we declared and initialize the value as 10. Then next system dot output and a. So now what will happen? K, then what is the value of the A right now for me? Okay, when I refer with the variable name, it goes, search will go to the main function. Then do we have A variable here? Yes, the value of A is what? 10. So 10 will be printed for me here. Then next system dot print global local variable dot X. So, when I refer global local variables dot ex, what will happen right now comes here global local variables dot ex. So what is the so when I refer with the help of a class name, directly the search will always goes to the static pool. Then what is the value of it is is fifty. That is fifty. That will be taken. Global local variables obj1 equal to new global local variables. So now what's happening? I told you new global local variable will help me to create an object. So it creates me one object here. Okay, now the object is created, but we have not given a name for it. So the name of the object is what? obj1. obj1 is the object name. OPJ1 as object name. Then global local variables. So what is this one means? This is my reference here. Okay. So the reference for the object. So this one will say that load all the global members of this object. Okay. Load the all the global members of the object here. So right now for me, global local variables is there, right? So all the Global so static and non-static. So these two 
are the global members so this two will be loaded first so the variables all the global members will be loaded it may be static or non-static and then even my main function so my main function also will get loaded into it so all these things will get loaded so from where this object is created means it's created from this main function from here because we are creating inside the main function only then next obj1 dot y so obj1 in that what is the y value it goes here in search it is 100 100 will be printed then obj1 dot x so in the obj1 what is my x value it is 50 so 50 will be printed then x now i'm referring only with the variable so when i give only the variable name always the search will go to the main function do we have x variable here no then now what will happen it goes to the static pool then gives me the value 50 50 will be printed clear so same thing right now here can you see it's 50 is printing now in case if i have a variable integer x is equal to 30 i'll have so i'm trying to create a new variable here okay that is a new local variable for this main function so here now if i give sizo x what will be the value sizo global local variable dot x what is the value sizo obj1 dot x what is the value right click run as java application see i'll just give this see now so when i give only x what's happening it's printing me 30 now why because locally we have a variable value called 30 right now so that's why 30 is printing right now for me when i give refer with the help of a class name global local variables dot x now what's happening it's taking the global value 50 and then printing okay then obj1 dot x it is also printing 50 so that's why i will always say so static members always should be referred with the help of a class name only okay that's why always static members should be referred with the help of class name okay only if you refer with actually what variable names whenever there is actually what a local variable created with the same name that will be overrided that's why suggestion always to refer the static members with the help of the class name clear for everyone so now i'll have these four steps So we have executors still here. When I print these dashes, it will print me these dashes here. Then after that, in text is equal to 30. Now what will happen? It will create me a new variable inside the main function. Integer x is equal to 30. Then system.println in x. Now it will go to the main function. Do I have x value? x variable, yes. So 30 will be printed. Then after that global local variable dot x. When I refer with the help of a class name, always search will go to static pool and then the value of x is what? 50. 50 will be printed. Then after that next, obj1 dot x. So 
what is obj one dot dx right now so this is my object what is the x value here it is 50 so 50 will be printed that's the thing clear for everyone then finally the entire main function is executed once the entire main function is executed now what will happen right now comes out of the main function when it comes out of it it will delete the main function memory okay once the main memory is deleted through the main only the object is created that object memory also will be deleted then after the when it comes out of the entire program static pool and then this entire memory location everything will be deleted so who is the person which we will be deleting it means garbage collector garbage collector is the person who will delete the entire memory location clear can you ask any questions so far clear guys yes. okay cool so this is about variables and data types so still we'll see actually one more program on variables and data types and then tomorrow we'll see about the functions okay so okay. tomorrow morning 7 a.m i'll again connect and then we'll see one program on variables and data types and finally we'll go with the functions okay, okay. yeah thank you thanks guys